And hello everybody, I'm Motor Guthy Fix It Auto. And today I'm going to be showing you one of the top three fixes that anybody with these trucks, whether it's a Silverado or a Yukon, as long as you have the 5.3 liter Vortec engine, what one of the top three biggest issues is with this truck, and that's going to be the intake manifold gaskets. Now, these often go out, and you often get a check engine light for a oxygen sensor being out. I did do a previous video on replacing the oxygen sensors, and because I disconnected the battery and plugged it back in, everything seemed to be working just fine. But then the check engine light popped up, and also some EVAP codes, so chances are, if that happens to you, then it's time to replace the intake manifold gaskets. Now, this is actually a very simple job. It's uh, just pretty tedious with all the stuff that you have to do, but it's actually really not that hard, and the only specialty tool I had to get was a torque wrench that measures inch-pounds, but besides that, Everything else should be pretty common, but without further ado, let's get down to it. And here is my 5.3 liter Vortec engine on this 2000 GMC Sierra 1500. So the first thing that we're gonna do, since I'm going to be playing around with the fuel lines a little bit in order to drain the fuel, is I'm going to remove the fuel pump relay. Yeah, so it's gonna be this guy right here. So I'm just going to remove the fuel pump relay. And what this is gonna do is so when I turn on the car, I can actually drain all the fuel that's out of the system. Now with that out, we could just turn on the car. So the car did not even start, which means that there wasn't much fuel in the lines to begin with. And hopefully by revving it a little bit, then that caused all the fuel to uh, go out the lines. There's still gonna be a little bit. And so we're gonna drain that off of the Schrader valve. And I'll show you just how to do that. So over here on the side of the engine, the Schrader valve is actually located just right over here. And so what we're gonna do is, first we're gonna pop off this cap. There we go. We're gonna put a rag underneath and then poke, just like how you would a tire, just poke this and then have all the fuel drain out. Now I'm just gonna put some super absorbent towels just right underneath it. And then poke the little valve. And it looks like we actually have absolutely no more fuel in the line. And now I can just cap this back up and move on. And now I've got a couple of eight millimeter bolts right over here. That should allow me to remove the cover. So now I'm going to use the same eight millimeter to loosen these hose clamps. And now I should be able to just remove this. Now, normally people would have to remove this with a flathead screwdriver over here and also remove this line, which is normally on this part right over here, but both of these are broken off and they're just uh, hanging off loose over here. So I could just actually just take this apart completely. Come on. Ugh. Just gotta be careful not to tear into the hose. Well, that wasn't fun but at least it's off. Now it's time for this guy. Ah. Next I'm gonna to have to remove these two hoses that are on both sides of the throttle body. Both of them have the pinch style hose clamps which I'm gonna to have to pinch in in order to get, but check this out. See, one end of the pinch style is right over here and the other one is all the way back there which is very inconvenient to get. Who does that? Well, I ended up getting them both out of the way, enough for me to be able to slip these hoses through. Do yourself a favor, when you put these back together, make sure these hose clamps are facing probably sideways instead of all the way to the back to make it easier for next time you, you're gonna do this, since this is a repetitive problem with these trucks. Now, this car does have 260,000 miles on the clock, so I'm willing to forgive it, but, oh man. It is nice though that these clamps when you clamp them together, they kind of stick, so that way you could just move them freely back and forth. It is kind of nice. Sweet, now I'm going to put my super absorbent towel underneath here. Now be prepared, because you will lose a little bit of coolant. <sighs> Come on, be a pal. Ah, this is probably melted onto that little pipe. Oh. Well, nothing really works out the way you want it to, but hey, at least I got that. Yeah, it looks like this hose over here is pretty much melted to this and uh, it's actually pretty swollen. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna cut this hose and replace it with another one. These hoses are actually pretty easy to find 
and uh, you should be able to get it from any auto parts store and I'll just cut and then put a new one on there so I don't have to worry about it. I will have to remove this throttle body since I do have the cables. The easiest way to do it from what I see is to remove these three bolts. Take it off the clips over here, which by the way, mine are broken off, so mine have just been hanging loose. And then I should be able to pull these two harnesses over here, which actually I'm gonna do right now. And one right there, blue one on top. And then remove these three bolts, and I should be able to remove the throttle body. So I'll remove these three eight millimeter bolts. And now the three 10 millimeter bolts on the throttle body. This hose should just pop off just like that. And with that, I was able to actually move the throttle body up and out of the way. And now it is time to disconnect the fuel injectors. In order to do that, there's this little tab that's over here. You just have to pull back on it. See, with this tab, you just have to pull back on it. Okay. And with this pulled back, you should be able to just slide it out. It's better grip without my gloves, so I took it off. Okay. They all have this little black tab, so I'm just gonna push it down. And then the connector should just come out. See, give you a better look at that push tab. And then I just have to do the same thing through out all of them. So I went ahead and disconnected all eight of them. So there was four per side. They're all gonna be underneath the uh, fuel rail. So you just follow the fuel rail and you should be able to find them. From here on out, we just have to unbolt the intake manifold. It's a total of 10 bolts. There's gonna be five on this side and then five on the other side over here. I'm sitting in my engine bay. And now it's time to unclip the map sensor in the back. It's time to remove these two clips right over here. And then remove the harness for the alternator. Pull up on the tab, oh, there we go. Just pull up on this tab. And then we remove the EVAP line by pushing on this tab over here and then pulling up. And then we're gonna remove this connector over here by pushing up on the tab as usual and pulling this out. Now I gotta remove this plate back here with two 10 millimeter bolts. And then remove this 10 millimeter bolt right here. And then we can pull the knock sensor connector forward and out of the way. And then we can remove this hose clamp from the brake booster up and out of the way. So we can remove this hose. Ah, there we go. Sweet. And next it's time to remove the uh, fuel line, which you're going to have to use. Uh, you can grab one of these sets. They're fairly inexpensive and you can find it at most auto parts place. Um, but we're gonna be using a 3 8 inch one. And the way that it works, here's the fuel line that we have to disconnect. We just put it in, force it in as far as you can. I'm going to put a rag to catch the fuel. It's really cold outside. My fingers are hardly working right now. And then should be able to twist and pull. Just like that. And there's a 5 16 fuel line just right below this one. And now this hose needs to be removed and it's just one 10 millimeter bolt. And that gets it so I can remove this. I'm gonna put this bolt back in so I don't lose it. And then once you get that out, the last thing should be the PCV hose just right on top. And the last thing I needed to do before I start removing the intake is taking the EVAP line up and out of the way. Most importantly, getting it through here, up and out, so that way this doesn't get caught up. I'm gonna need both hands for this, but now I can move the uh, intake manifold up and out of the way. And now the intake manifold's gone. And look at that. It is gunked up beyond belief. I'm gonna have to clean this up before I put the uh, intake manifold back on, but this is like thick and caked on and there's like leaves getting ready to go in. So I'm going to block off the ports and then I'm gonna go at this to clean this up and I'll show you how to replace the gasket on the intake manifold before we go put it back in. 
So here's the intake manifold for the truck. Now one thing that I would recommend doing is to inspect the entire intake manifold. I actually cleaned up a lot of the gunk already. I don't know if you could tell, but it looks a lot better than it did before. And upon inspecting it, I wasn't able to find anything else that was wrong with it. The intake manifold's in great condition, which is awesome. Um, these tend to be a little bit on the pricier end if they do end up being broken, but it's good to replace if you find any cracks or anything. But luckily, in my case, mine's perfectly good to go. The only thing is this throttle body gasket's looking a little tired and worn out, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, there we go, remove and replace with a brand new one. There we go, and just make sure it's well seated in place. Next, we can move on to the main part, which is the intake manifold gasket. Just gotta flip it over. And luckily, these are very easy to replace. They are actually just uh, clipped on. So you just have to pull on this tab here. There's one right here, one right here, and one last one right here on the, on the left side. And it all just comes out as one assembly. And you just wanna take the opportunity also to clean the gasket mating surface. There tends to be a lot of grime on it and you just wanna make sure that it's seated well, both on this end and on the engine block end. And with all the gasket surfaces very respectfully cleaned, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the new gasket on which just clips on just like that till you hear a satisfying click on all three parts. And I'm also going to make sure that all the bolts can move up and down freely and then are not caught up by the gasket, which all of them are good to go. And then I just repeat the same process for the other side. I ended up cleaning up the cylinder heads on the engine and now the gasket mating surface is nice and clean and ready to go. Now the other thing is going to be the knock sensors which you can see is right there and right there. I had every intention of replacing them. If you tend to actually replace the intake manifold gaskets, it's, it's actually just uh, normal to replace the knock sensors along with it since they're literally right here. You just pop these covers off and you remove them with a socket and, uh, and then you could just replace them. And I actually ordered two brand new ones from Amazon, some OEM ones, which tends to be actually half the cost of when you order it through an auto parts store. All of my local auto parts store actually had them for double the price. The only issue is gonna be that since they're knock sensors, they're going to be actually very sensitive to shock. So they tend to be moved around, bumped around during shipping. And uh, I looked up a video on how to test the knock sensors to make sure that they're good. One tested good and one tested bad. So since I had time, I figured I'll just replace it and order a new one. And then what ended up happening was the new one ended up being also bad. So I had a decision to make. I could either pay double in order to go to the auto parts store and get one and then test it to make sure that it's good and it also was not bumped around in, in uh, transit. Uh, or I could just, since I have no check engine light, I could just put everything back now and see how long that lasts me until the check engine light pops up. The intake manifold has not been taken out in so long that the hoses ended up uh, being so stuck to like the throttle body and that just made it a huge pain. But now since I actually ended up replacing this with a brand new hose, then uh, hopefully everything will be easier to take off for the next time if I have to do that. But in the meantime, I made an executive decision. I'm just gonna put everything back together the way that it is right now with the new intake manifold gaskets and then hope that the knock sensors last me a long time without them being tripped off. And there we go. I got the intake manifold in place. I made sure to be careful with the wires, especially the knock sensor wire, which tends to get caught underneath. I made sure that was fed through and it's uh, sitting right on top of the intake manifold. All the fuel injection wires made sure to pull that to the side and then put it in place and then thread them in just by hand. They do have to be torqued in a sequence in order to get the gasket to seat properly. And so I'll be sure to put that uh, a picture of the torque sequence up in the top right as I'm doing it, but it's in two waves and they have to be an inch pound. So I'm gonna break in my brand new torque wrench in order to get that mounted properly. So I'll start by setting this to 44 inch pounds and then starting with the most inner. That's one, that's two, that's three. That's four, that's five, 
That's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then 89 inch pounds in the same order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that makes ten. From here I'm just going to go along the fuel rail and attach each injector until they click and push in these great clips. Okay, got this hose connected back in. It was a little tough. I just had to push it in and make sure that the uh, gasket was seated properly and then I was able to screw this in. Get the knock sensor connectors connected and back in place. And our connector right back here also clicked into place. Now we get the two wire harnesses going through the channels over here and then we can mount the plastic plate back on. There we go, my mistake, I needed to put the sensor outward facing so that way the wire harness can sit in place and then I was able to put the plastic plate back in to hold everything down. So now that that's done, we can move on to the throttle body. So next is to mount up the throttle body, but before I do that, one thing that I wanna make sure is to uh, clean up the throttle body because what happens is, because there's a lot of combustion that goes on back here, then uh, there's just a lot of carbon buildup that ends up going over here and sometimes it even stops this plate from closing all the way. So CRC actually makes throttle body and air intake cleaner, specifically made for this. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spray it down. I'm gonna brush it a little bit and I'm gonna try to get off as much of this carbon buildup as I can. And then I'm gonna install it. And now with the newly cleaned throttle body and our fresh new gasket, we can just put the throttle body in place and then torque all these down to 89 inch pounds. Throttle body is in place and good to go. Next, I can get the throttle body cables in place. And the purpose of these is just to hold the throttle body cables. So, they actually do not need to be tight. They just need to hold the plate down. And actually, looks like this doesn't even hold anything down. So, I'll just order new clips just to get these to sit in place, but I don't think that's necessarily important right now. Pop the fuel lines back in until you hear this click. Just gonna do this one. Ah, there we go, twisting it also helps. Get these clips back into place just by pushing them down. See, both those clips are in and they're good to go. While I'm over here, it's also a good idea to get this hose connected back to the brake booster. There we go, that's in place. These are fun, just gotta connect the alternator. Get this connected to the throttle body. Get this one down here as well. Get this one connected. There we go. Get this hose back in. Then we get the coolant lines back into the throttle body. Get the hose clamp on there facing out for easier access next time there we go beautiful get the other hose connected in as well so it's kind of hard to see but i got the hose clamps on and the hoses on on both sides and uh, i have them facing out so next time i would have to take this off it's going to be easy to get to because this is this was one of the biggest pains and i did get a new pcv hose because mine was actually broken all along. The, uh, there's a, like a little plastic part that's over here that actually snapped off. Actually, let me show you. This guy snapped off and broke. So I ended up purchasing a new PCB hose. So the PCB just goes down. So this is supposed to plug in here. And the last thing I'm gonna do before putting the air hose back in and the fuel pump relay back in to test out this truck is I'm going to clean out the mass airflow sensor. Not too bad. Grab my specific mass airflow sensor cleaner. 
So now I can put the mass airflow sensor back in and then tighten it down. There you go, nice and snug. So that was just an extra step, but the mass airflow sensor is back in, the connector is good to go. So now I gotta put is the air hose back in and then the fuel pump relay and this car is good to start. So I'll get this part in place. As well as the throttle body. And before I put the engine beauty cover back on, it's time to put the fuel pump relay back in and give this truck a start. Alrighty, now it's time to turn on the truck, get the fuel pump to prime a little bit, and then beautiful. That's what I like to see. Nice clean idle, no lights up on the dash. Pretty sure we're good to go, just gotta drive it a little bit for the sensors to, in order to get the right air fuel ratio, and then this car should start idling just fine. Just a little bit of shaking, so I think it just needs to learn a little bit. But besides that, this truck is ready to go, and uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share this video with somebody who you think might enjoy the content. Let me know what you guys think about how I decided to shoot this video. I decided to show a little bit more on the behind the scenes to show you guys just how everything doesn't turn out the way that you would want it to. But if you like this format, please let me know. If you would like to see more of uh, me cutting that stuff out, then let me know as well. But thank you guys so much for watching.